welcome back. Today we're going to be performing a very special Beltane ritual for you guys. I'm super excited to be doing this with Miss Jess. And it's, it's Stella Taro, is that correct for your, for your YouTube too? And yeah. it's a brand new experience. <laughs> and we're going to be connecting into the energies of, of Morrigan particularly in her Anu fertility element and her aspect this way of the land, a little bit of warrior energy. Uh, we're going to be talking you through a little bit of a journey. We're going to do a little cleansing, a little card pull, all things sort of within how we feel Beltane energies kind of sit with us this year. Um, and the power of blossoming, the power of unfurling and all that energy. It's very, it's very, of the matriarchs it's very of the mothers and of the ancestral line and of the land so i'll hand it over to to jess for a moment just to say hello hello my name is jess and if you have never met me before i know am known as stellar rain dancer on youtube and on instagram and i have a tarot reading business called stellar tarot and besides doing professional tarot and oracle card readings i also make pagan prayer beads i'm the author of my name is the morrigan and i I'm here on the YouTube space with Joey to help educate other witches and pagans about uh, goddesses like the Morrigan, other Celtic spirituality, druidry, that sort of thing. And I'm really honored to be here with you today, Joey. Thank you. So we're going to just open up the energies here today to everybody. So regardless of when you're watching this you can still tap into these energies they're going to be open it's going to be something that you can feel tangibly at any point so if you're watching it the day after don't worry you can still take part and enjoy it there's no time limit anything like that there's a couple of things that i might suggest before we get started in the ritual that you might like to have available to you you might want to have a drum we're going to do a little drumming at some point if you have one you might want to have some applications for smudging or cleansing we're probably going to have a few different ones i've got a few different ones just me in front of me so we're going to do that and you might want some water and something snacky for the end and i will let uh i'll let just tell you about her snacks because hers are way more impressive than mine um is part of the ritual today we are going to be um doing an offering at the end something that we will do symbolically in the ritual and then we are hoping that uh, participants at home will have some sort of food and beverage offering that they can then take out tangibly into your own space and, and offer it up uh, afterwards. So typically in pagan ritual, in Wiccan or witchcraft ritual, you will have um, a part at the end where you are grounding yourself back down, bringing yourself out of ritual energy and mindset. And one way to ground yourself is to eat and drink a little bit. Something about the act of putting food and nourishment back into your body that really helps to get you out of ritual mindset and back into a mundane everyday mindset. So for myself today, I have a little bit of a spice cake with raisins and frosting. I made this the other day. I personally hate baking. So whenever I put a bit of energy into something that I don't enjoy doing, and then I use that as offering to, to spirit, that is something that really shows I um, am sacrificing some of my time and my energy in, in name of my deity. So I will be using this as partly my grounding food, but also partly my um, offering. And I also have in my chalice here some ale, a, a beer that my husband has made from scratch. He brews at home. And so I always love to use um, something, you know, water works absolutely fine, but this is something that I have at my disposal and that I would like to use um, in offering to the Morgan. So yeah, well, that's what I have, but whatever you have at home works well for you too, especially during these times mm -hmm. when what we have at home may not always be the most ideal. Mm -hmm. I have my water in my, my crystal bottle, which, oh gosh, yeah, my crystal bottle that my friend bought me charging away. So that's always fun. I have my little 
not handmade cake down there. <laughs> I also have a little bit of battlefield dirt that I have, and, it's, and you're not going to be able to see because it's in the fire. No, it's it's behind me, and it's sort of charging on on the Morgan space on the working altar. So I have a little bit of battle dirt that we're going to like. It's going to sit with us, and then I'm going to take it and put earth to earth. So that's something else you can do if you want to do something a bit different from just just food. The food's a really good idea for grounding, so we do highly recommend that. But if you want to, you know, do a little something extra, that's a little something else you can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we will start by cleansing and smudging ourselves and everybody else out there in the ether. And after that, mm -hmm. uh, Jess is going to pull a card for us. So I'm going to start with some Florida water. I've actually got the, sh the Shaman one, which I'd never heard of before, but when I ordered my regular Florida water, they were like, we have this one and this one's more shamanistic in energy. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Smells Sign right. me up. It's slightly more fruity and it's... Mm. <sighs> okay. So as we take the time to cleanse ourselves, we invite you to cleanse yourselves too, in whichever manner best suits you there are no rules uh but i'm going to do a little a little musical duo there's two musical things here and then i have the smudge fan as well so just to begin with we're just gonna just gonna shake a little bit i got one of these after having a healing session in glastonbury and the lady used one of these and i was like that's amazing i need one there's something about the way that it just the noise, it's just beautiful, it's just very cleansing. So everybody who is listening, everybody who wants to partake, just feel the vibration shifting and lightening within you. Just allow that heaviness of the day just to go. Just shake along with me. Shake your arms, move, roll your shoulders. Let all that negativity just flow from the body. Just let go of it, just release. Down back into the earth to be recycled, letting that energy just flow out and flow back in, create a nice circle of energy, just draw energy up from the earth to fill and push your energy down into the earth, so you're creating a nice circle of energy. I am using incense for my smudging personally. This is actually Joey's incense. It is the blade over shield and it is one that I use every single time I do a working with the Morrigan, whether it be a tarot reading or whether it be just a, um, a ritual where I'm calling in the Morrigan. This particular energy is very, very Morriganic. I have mine going too. Mine, uh, mine's in the fire. One moment. I'll pull it out of the fire in its little cauldron. I'm actually burning the same thing. So <laughs> there you go, synchronicities. And we just. We didn't even plan that. No. <laughs> synchronicities are real. So if you're, if you're using an incense at home, just take a little while just to breathe in, enjoy that scent. Cleanse out with the smoke with you. Fan of feathers if you have, and if not, just fan with your hands and just allow that smoke. Hands take work beautifully. Mm -hmm. oh, and then last but not least, I have the sand bowl, which I love. So we're just going to just... Just going to upset Daisy. <laughs> not a fan but we're just going to reset the energy <laughs> uh. 
And I invite everyone to take a big, deep cleansing breath in. And out. And in. And out. And in. And out. And let us begin. So I'm going to hand over to Jess now and let her pull a card for everybody and she's going to do what she does best. <laughs> I am using the Forest of Enchantment Tarot today because I feel like it really pulls in a lot of the energies that we are hoping to honor and um, invoke amongst all of our ritual participants today. It's got a very Beltane energy feel um, and it is inspired by the forests of Britain and uh, the Celtic energies that Joey and I connect to so deeply. And this card is just going to help us for uh, this ritual today. So the card that has come up is the Six of Visions. And this card reminds us that while we are experiencing some turbulent times in the world right now, with all of us having to isolate at home, we may feel like we are cut off from our friends, our family, the people that we love, our coven brothers and sisters, or even just the people that we connect with through the internet, through the ether. And it may be very tempting to reminisce about Beltanes and rituals and energies of days gone by and not to focus in and be in the present moment for where we are now. But it's very important that when we approach every ritual, when we approach every sacred action and sacred Sabbath, that we take it for what it is at that moment. We cannot be together in the physical world right now. So let us be together in the best way that we know and that we can be right now. Let us invoke the energies that we can send out the healing to the world, do the things that we can in this present day and time and do our own bit to come together for Beltane without actually physically coming together. Don't allow yourself to fall too deeply into the what ifs and the, the rituals and days of the gone of the bygone be here now try to tap into it not let your anxieties overcome you too much and just do what you can in this moment in this space in this time mm, that worked out lovely that's a beautiful mm -hmm. energy for for the uh for this spell mm -hmm. okay so now we're going to call in the energies of the quarters i uh, know that not everybody does this and it does perhaps uh, is more associated with wicker in the modern time i like calling in the elements regardless and i call them in as trees so i'm going to uh, call them in now and i'm going to describe it to you so you can visualize alongside with me how i would do it and that's how we're going to get started. So, okay. Nice way to connect it to the Morgan and to Celtic energies as well by associating it with trees mm -hmm. and consequently with the Oum as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <sighs> so we call to the spirits of the East, the element of air. And the way that I visualize this is with a cherry blossom tree in full bloom. You may wish to go for a hawthorn tree if you like, if you wish to keep it a little bit more in, in the English countryside. It's entirely up to you, but it has to be fragrant. It has to be full of blossoms. Those blossoms have to float in the air. And the, when you're going for one of those walks in the April into May, showers with all those rain petals raindrops and petals floating in the air fragrant and all that scent and we call the spirits of the east here present and ask them to watch over our right hail and welcome hail and welcome 
And then we call to the spirits of the south, element of fire, where the great oak tree resides, tall and strong and leafy boughs on a hot summer's day. Oak has the deep roots and is resilient and can survive fire from the sky, can survive lightning. And is quintessentially English, if you ask me, the oak tree. So we call the spirit of the essence of fire here present. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. And we call to the spirits of the West, element of water. And this is where the great weeping willow resides, where the tall branches stem upwards and then float down again in one sweepful, sweeping artful motion into the water. And there's something just so healing about the willow energy. So connective to that realm of the emotions. You really do feel held by willow energy. We welcome the spirits of water to the ritual. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. And we call to the spirits of the north, to the element of earth. And here we have the energies of the pine, of the lodgepole pine, tall, all encompassing, reaching up between earth and sky that grounds us down into the earth. It's very fragrant, very cleansing, very, it's very of the hearth as well, even though it is of nature. It crosses that border, it crosses that boundary. And many of us take pine into our home at many times during the year. So we welcome the elements of earth, hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. And in the center, I want you to visualize a massive maypole. And I'm going to allow that to flow through your imagination, how that looks. Just stood there right in the center of the spiritual ecosystem, that symbol of coming together, of tying ribbon around of childhood innocence, which ties right back into the card and that phallic symbol that it can be tied up in feminine weaving energy, the perfect balance here at Beltane. And before we move on to the next part, I'm just going to allow you to sit in those energies just for a minute and just soak them in and feel them. Would you like to do the, the ribbon to each corner? Certainly. So, we are going to envision a ribbon extending from the maypole in the center to go out to each of the four corners. So, we are going to be bringing in a um, purple ribbon to the east to connect with the energies of air. To south, we are bringing in a yellow ribbon and envisioning the energies of the waxing sun and the strengthening sun that element uh, and that energy of fire and warmth that is so associated with Beltane. To the west, we are bringing in the uh, a nice pale blue, a watery blue ribbon. So imagine it extending out to the willow tree in the west. 
And then for north, for the lodgepole pine, we are bringing in a green ribbon to connect with the energies of earth, greening of the earth that is happening right now. And giving a, um, a nod to the fact that pine and evergreen trees in general stay green all year round. And then the final ribbon, as we pull from the maypole, is the, may the ribbon that connects us to the maypole. And this is deep red, blood red, that extends from the maypole to your heart space. And this is a thread, a thread to your ancestors, which we will explore in a little more depth in a, in a moment. But I just want you to take a moment and just feel the deep magic coming from each of these threads that connects to you. Feel the energies of earth, air, fire and water surrounding you and being brought down into your energetic body. Feel the connection to all of your ancestors, to all those who lived before you through the red thread. And know too that the gods and goddesses all watch over you. And we welcome Mother Morrigan and we will give her a proper dedication in a moment, but we can't go forward without mentioning her, of course. <laughs> so just feeling those energies for a moment, just sitting with them. And we're going to move on and we're going to drum our way into that energetic space a little bit deeper to feel those energies just a little bit more in the body. So I'm going to start with a gentle heartbeat and I believe Jess is going to build up a shamanic drumming in accompaniment. So whoop. let Joey get started and then we will kind of come in together and as often happens with drumming, whether you are holes apart together in the same room drumming often ends up synchronizing mm -hmm. okay Okay. Would you like to welcome in the ancestors? Yes. So, <clears throat> wherever you are right now, settle in for a moment and imagine coming into your energetic space 
the ancestors of your matriarchal line, of your patriarchal line, of the energetic line, if you prefer, or if that feels more right for you. There is no wrong way to call in and to bring in ancestors. All that matters is that you feel that connection with them. Welcome ancestors. Welcome those of our blood and not of our blood. Welcome to those who have inhabited the same lands that we have, to the ones who have come before, and to the ancient ones, to the people who are simply just a memory, who have left their mark upon our earth, and who we are tied together through, through that red thread of blood, of ancestral blood. We have all come from the same human blood. We are all made of blood, of bone, of flesh, of hair. We breathe the same air. We drink the same water. Hail and welcome to ancestors, recent and ancient, to those close to us and distant, to those of our physical lineage and of our energetic. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. We also want to welcome in the ancestor of earth, of the land, because we are all connected to this land which we walk on, this earth. And into this earth is infused the energy of the gods, of Morrigan. She is of the land and we are of her. And there is no separation between this land that we walk on and us. We beat with one heart. We need it to live and she needs us to live. We take care of her as her guardians and she watches over us and shares her bounty with us. And as we draw the energy up through the earth, we honor the ancestor that is the earth, the land beneath our feet, as well as all of the human ancestors. Hail and welcome. Hail and welcome. We're just going to take a minute to welcome in the energies of the Morrigan herself, the Great Mother, the Phantom Queen, she who walks among the lands of the living and slips through a cave and walks through the lands of the dead, she who is the liminal space, the crow, the queen, the warrior, she who watches over us at all times, whose healing may not be gentle, but it is needed. And in these times, we all know about that kind of healing. Hail to thee, my mother. Hail to thee, Morrigan. Welcome. Hail and welcome, O oh great Morrigan. <sighs> okay, so we're just going to take a minute to sit in these energies, see how they feel to you. See if you can visualize sitting in a great circle surrounded by ancestors. Just take a moment to just sit in that energy and really feel it before we move into the journey. So we're going to invite you now to partake in this journey with us. We're going to talk you through it and so you're welcome to just close your eyes, take some deep breaths, make sure you're comfortable. And as we talk, you should be able to visualize along with us. If you can't, don't worry, just listen. 
this journey that we're going to go on together. So to begin, I want you to focus again on that maypole at the center. And then I'm going to invite you to take a ribbon from that maypole in whichever color speaks to you. Would you like to alternate this bit? Yeah. So we will approach the maypole ourselves alongside of all of you. This is a huge maypole and it is decorated with ribbons of all colors. And please feel free to go and pick the color that calls to you. You're going to hold it in your right hand or your left hand, depending on which direction you would like to dance the maypole in. For those of you who feel more called to really push energy out away from you, maybe you want to stop a bad habit to banish an energy or a way of being. Perhaps you want to banish something that you feel is oppressing you. Please feel free to approach the maypole and select your ribbon in your left hand. You will be dancing the pole witter shins or counterclockwise. For those of you who feel more inclined to participate in this ritual from an invoking state, please grasp your ribbon with your right hand. You will be dancing the maypole in a uh, clockwise direction. And now everyone is going to take a moment and holding your ribbon in your hand, you are going to set your intention for what you would like to achieve as we weave this maypole together and set the intention for the spell that you want to weave into this maypole. Set the intention that you would like to send out into the earth into the ether, into this ritual space. This will be our energy building. Okay. So, choose your direction and face in the direction you want to go. And as we dance, we're going to be weaving in and out of one another and people going in different directions. And you're going to weave one in front, one behind and alternate. This is how the dance of the maypole is performed and that's how it will look and all of those threads will cross over in so doing. So with me now, choose your direction, take your thread and begin to move. If you'd like, you can choose to deliberately raise your arm up and down, move your body up and down as if you are weaving in and out and imagine yourself encountering all sorts of different people as you weave the maypole remember that as we weave we are gradually going to be getting closer and closer in the ribbons move further and further down the maypole and it will become a little bit harder to move around your fellow witches so remember as you weave your energy and your intention in to also share the space with the others that are also participating. And through this dance, we are reminded that even though we feel separate right now, we are not. We are weaving through one another's energy. We are getting closer and closer to one another. So that as we weave our way around this maypole, as we weave our intention and our wishes and our hopes and dreams into this maypole, they cross over the hopes and dreams of each other. And we honor those dreams in so doing. And as we pass by, we might nod to one another. We might acknowledge one another. We might smile in one another's direction and know that whilst outside in the physical realm, we might feel separate, here we can feel the connection to one another and know that we're not separate we're all weaving as one weaving together of all these separate individuals strengthens the spell it strengthens the energy 
because we are all supporting one another in this process. As our ribbons cross over, they form a weave, which is much stronger than just a thread or a ribbon on its own. And as we are approaching the center, all of those threads are going to be woven around that maypole. All of those threads and wishes are going to be accumulating and traveling up that focal point. And you can feel that power building that connection building as you get tighter and tighter and closer and closer around the maypole. And then at the last moment, we're going to stand shoulder to shoulder with one another surrounding the maypole together. And I invite you to close your eyes and just still holding on to the very end of your ribbon, feel everybody around you stood shoulder to shoulder and know that we are one and we are not putting anybody ahead or anybody behind one another we are all one shoulder to shoulder to shoulder and we are each holding our wish in our hand and i just want you to take one more moment and really visualize what it is that you would like to wish for this beltane just Hold that in your body for a moment. Allow that to build just a little bit more within you. Visualize what that would look like, what that would feel like, how much joy that would bring you. Just hold that wish for a moment, right in your body, right in your heart space. And now we're going to release it. In one big, joyous motion, I want you to let go of that ribbon and throw your hands up in the air, releasing your wish, releasing your intention out into the world, into the spiritual ecosystem, up through the maypole, up through your body, up through your arms and out into the world. Just release it with a massive amount of joy, a little bit of a wiggle if you like, last little bit of dancing and shaking, just allow that wish to joyously flow from you out into the world. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Then? Yeah, just, just shake. It feels wonderful. <laughs> and then we can bring our arms down and we'll just stand shoulder to shoulder with one another for a little bit in each other's presence. <sighs> So now that we have finished releasing our intention out into the world, it is time to ground our excess energy and bring ourselves back into a more regular everyday sort of state of being. So from your position close around the maypole, shoulder to shoulder with your fellow witches, we are going to move ourselves backwards sitting as a giant ring shoulder to shoulder now with the trees that we have the maple ribbons tied around so you may be sitting right up against a tree you may be sitting with someone beside you just close almost enough to touch but everybody still has their own space and when you are ready sit down cross your legs or sit however is comfortable for you in the circle, facing the maypole, facing all your fellow wishes and participants. And we're going to imagine the roots of our trees extending down from our root chakra down into the earth. We're going to imagine that we are able to receive the earth's energies spirits energies through our crown chakra sitting just above our head and these two energies are going to be able to flow backwards and forwards up and down through our chakras through our energy lines and we can place our hands down on the earth really strengthen that rooted connection or 
If you are more in the need of receiving energy, place your palms open face up towards the sky on top of your knees. And imagine your body as well as the rest of the bodies in this circle is now a conduit for energy. Excess and unneeded energy flows down into the earth to be used for healing, transmutation, and transformation. Energy that is needed is easily received into our energetic lines. Feel the guardianship of the trees, of the ancestors. Feel your ties to the land wherever you are in this world. The earth is ancient. Whatever you need to give to her, whatever you need from her, she can give to you as she has given and healed for eons. We are the stewards and the guardians of this sacred grove, this circle of trees. You can always visit this beautiful circle on the astral plane whenever you need to or whenever you feel like it. And that ties into what we're going to do next. I don't dismiss elements. I don't think that if it doesn't feel right to me, so I just open the space, thank the elements for participating and let them come and go as they please. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to start with Morrigan, of course. We're going to say thank you to the Great Queen, whose energy runs through the land, whose energy of our own personal sovereignty carries us to places we never thought we'd travel to, and yet we do and we overcome things we never thought we could, and yet we do. And we find ourselves realizing dreams that we never thought we could achieve, and yet we do. And we can, and so can you. And I thank her for being here with us, always. Hail Morrigan. Hail Morrigan. And as we open up the energy we thank the spirits of the air in the east for all of their gifts and for watching over us. And they may come and go at their pleasure. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. And we thank the spirits of the south, the element of fire, for all of their gifts, for watching over our right. May they come and go at their leisure. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. And we thank the element of water for watching over our right and for all of their gifts. May they come and go at their leisure. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. And we thank the element of earth of the north for watching over our right and for all of their gifts. May they come and go at their leisure. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. At this time, you can imagine yourself moving towards the center of the circle again. And there is a plate of offering food, whatever you personally have brought at home. And there is a cup of offering beverage, again, whatever you have brought at home. At this point, you may take a bite, several bites, a sip or several sips of your devotional food and beverage and then we will also in our physical space after the ritual is complete offer the remainder to the deity in whatever space place and form that you feel is right there is a tradition of using some form of honey in a beltane offering as it is uh, tended to be associated with the fae and uh, enjoyed by the fae but uh, if honey is against your personal eating practices and beliefs any form of sweetened food or beverage is perfectly acceptable in however you like to imbibe of it so hail and welcome and hail and farewell. 
well to the Morrigan and to the elements. Hail and welcome and hail and farewell. So just take a little time as well at the end, just to just roll your shoulders, shake your body a little bit, um, come back to yourself a little, a little bit more as you're grounding with your food. Like, don't go crazy while you're eating. Don't choke, please. But like, just <laughs> just to bring yourself a little bit back, a little bit more in and of the world again. Just to take your time with it as well. Don't don't force it. Don't rush if you're feeling a little bit ethereal, which can easily happen after ritual and thank you for joining us everybody and um, thank you for being a part of this with us for, and thank you to Jess for uh, doing this today and we're going to uh, finish with an old Celtic blessing which I thought was a really nice one I, I came across this I had a different one in mind but I came across this one and I was like oh no this one this one's beautiful so mm. May the blessing of light be on you, light without and light within. May the blessed sunlight shine on you and glow and warm your heart till it glows like a great peat fire. Mm. And I thought that was beautiful for Beltane, that sort of taking in that bonfiery energy. Indeed. So. Thank you everyone so much for being with us in this ritual here today. From my heart to yours, I am wishing you a very, very blessed Beltane, powerful ritual. And I hope that all of you are keeping safe and healthy and well, and that this ritual is part of what helps you get through these uncertain times. Know that Joey and I are sending our love to you. Absolutely. May all your wishes of the Maypole come true and you find your way to healthy, happy, wonderful memories to come, even though the times are a little unsettled right now, but we will all make it through together, shoulder to shoulder around the Maypole and shoulder to shoulder in life. Mm -hmm. Many blessings, guys. Many blessings. <laughs>